20 um if you don't know this is relationships worth more than money podcast i am tweezy kennedy um man it's been a minute and the reason why it's been a minute is because you know i've been doing how can you say uh let me see in lamest terms i just been a dad been coach dad and uh you know, I'm a girl dad, so um, my daughters had uh, Little League World Series things going on. And um, before we even get to that, they had tournaments in D.C. And both my daughters, uh, Elena won and Elise won, Tootie, um, they won a respective division uh, or state championship for 10U and 12U. So, um as a coach for Elena's team, and, you know, I come in and fill in when I can or when I need it to um, for Tootie's team. Um, but full-time coaching, and um, I will say it's been, man, it's been fun. Uh, but the main thing about it is uh, I didn't know if I was going to really love softball like I I do. I really didn't think I was gonna do that. Um I really focus more on like how not to treat it as baseball. But all the fundamentals is pretty much the same. It's like here and there, like, you know, the pitching is different. But uh I wasn't trying to go into it as like, hey, this is me teaching me. It was me teaching Elena, me teaching Elise. And with that you know, uh, my kids and their team, man, their respective teams, man, they, they went undefeated. Um, the 12 you did. And we won the state tournament and was uh, elected and to go to the Little League World Series, the regional uh, World Series. And we got there. We showed, we showed up pretty nice. And, and first and foremost, shout out to Keith and Kevin, man, um, the Mamie Johnson uh, Little League team. Uh, the president and the coach. Um, without them, I wouldn't be able to be coaching for the girls. Uh, and also shout out to the rest of the team, man, because that was <clears throat> a great. It was just everything about the girls was great, and it's like I had multiple daughters. I didn't just have two. I had eleven. You know what I mean? And all the girls from Noel, um, Kellen, Carson, Sean. Dirty, um, uh, Aaron, Sash, uh, London, um, who else I missed? Did I miss anybody? Oh, M, going off of the, all the bases. M at first, London at second, um, Dirty at third or short, um, or Kellen, um, Elena at catcher, Kellen Carson, uh, and oh, Devin pitching. And um yeah, man, all the girls, man, they they uh they showed out. They showed out and um unfortunately we didn't win. We lost both games. But the best thing about it it was just about, you know, um just the experience. Like being able to like be in a whole nother state, playing sports, playing something that you love and networking and, and building friendships, all the girls built friendships with girls from, you know, all different teams, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire. I think that was their dorm mates, New Hampshire. Um, but, yeah, man, it was definitely a, 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 a eye-opener for myself as a coach. Um, it taught me how to be prepared more. Uh, it taught me how to, how to um, enter each game and each practice different. Um, but at the end of the day, something I love. I love sports. 
I love baseball. Baseball is my favorite sport. And now softball is my favorite sport because my, my daughter's playing. And even if they don't play, I, I know I will be coaching more. Um, hopefully, I'll be coaching for the middle school team that my daughter go to. And um, we'll start from there. But other than that, shout out to y'all, man. Because y'all, y'all like, for real, like, the relatives, y'all, like, y'all really been asking, yo, when the next episode? When the next episode? When this? When that? When this? And y'all really are tuned in. And when I took this break, I didn't know, like, how I was going to be able to bounce back into the, the potting because my focus was all on, on sports. But I always check my my um my stats and see like who watching my uh podcast, who watching the reels, who watching the the YouTube shorts, and y'all are watching them, and I appreciate that. Um, we already have six hundred followers. Um, let's try to get to a a K one thousand, and uh, now we just need to get the watch hours for real, and then I can start collecting um some monetary um residuals from this. But uh, again, shout out to y'all. Uh, let's 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 get into it. Um, so one of the first topics, my best friend Que Que Cuisines. Um, she she gave me some dope topics, and also shout out to Dara. Dara also uh, gave me some some uh, insight on like some things I should talk about because they both been saying I need to just do a podcast by myself. So here I am doing this podcast by myself in the cut. Um, so we're going to talk about standing on business and uh, the pain and the gain of standing 10 toes down. Um, we can just really like, I'm really, I'm really a man of, of many words, but when it comes to standing on business, just know, uh, some things you really got to you got to take in consideration and some things you just have to have a a, a no uh what you call it um non-negotiable things are non-negotiable when it comes to me uh i.e. disrespect you know what i mean uh loyalty um those are main two i'll go with those uh disrespect and loyalty just off the simple fact like um, we all grow up from different backgrounds and, you know, me coming from Detroit, um, I was always taught to stand on 10 toes because like, you know what I mean? If your word ain't it, you ain't really valuable out there in the streets and you're not valuable out there in the real world. Um, so we, uh, well, we, me. I've been, you know what I mean, doing a little bit of transitioning since I've been here in, in Maryland. And um, right now, I know a lot of people have been, you know, asking uh, for music and stuff like that. But if you pay attention, I've been dropping something, a single, an instrumental, something every month. But uh, for sure, my birthday, I just talked to Newland. Um, <laughs> we're going to drop something for my birthday, hopefully. Uh, but if we don't drop for my birthday, we definitely gonna drop for September, um, because I'm always uh, working, always working, and uh, ten zeros is still in effect. So I hope y'all didn't think that that was gone. Uh, I've been dropping everything I've done on ten zeros music group. Um, that's me. I'm the CEO, producer, engineer, um, and that's what it is. Like so. Uh, no matter what I do in life, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a create relationships. I'm a build relationships, but I'm also gonna delete relationships, just because if they not um for me, or uh, you start noticing the way people move. Uh, people start moving funny. You gotta you gotta pop smoke is what we say in the military. You know what I mean? Cause but pop smoke and get up out of there. And there ain't no disrespect to pop smoke. Rest in peace to pop smoke. It's just the terminology we used to say when we literally would be extracting ourselves or snipers or somebody else from a house. We would pop smoke, extract the people, get them on our trucks, and we get up out of there and drop them off to the next location. 
So that's what I'm doing. I'm pretty much maneuvering. Um, it's just me um, maneuvering, doing my music thing. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, that's what it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing, no, it's nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to transition in life uh, when you see that uh, people aren't good for you. You know what I mean? And it's not just it's not just anybody. The people know who they are. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, I have a, a non-negotiable with, with fuck shit. <laughs> at the end of the day, I just don't have time for it. You know what I mean? Um, anything else? Anything else? No? Nothing else? Okay. So we're going to go to the next thing. Um, overcoming adversity. Uh, navigating life when the odds are stacked against you. Uh, I think I've been, adversity's probably been my middle name <laughs> as, as a kid, as an adult, all of that. Since I've been in this world, I've been, um, hit with adversity, no matter what, um, uh, as a child, um, growing up, um, as a teenager, uh, and then joining the Marine Corps, um, adversity, you know, when you, when you join something of that stature, you understand, like, it ain't just about you, but at the end of the day, this is your career. Um, so, uh, things that I've dealt with in the Marine Corps, uh, i.e., PTSD, um, blatant, uh, blatant racism, uh, and I'm not trying to bash the military because I recommend everybody to go to the military, but it's this thing that I, uh, dealt with and, um, the best thing to do and I learned adversity in the Marine Corps uh is just you know adapt and overcome that's one of the things that I was always taught as a marine is to always adapt and overcome so I was able to maneuver through my career in the Marine Corps even though it got cut short because of the war um they pretty much forced out like 40,000 marines out of the military when when uh, Obama wanted to uh bring all the troops back Cause that's what you know, that was his thing. He wanted to do, and I'm not knocking him for it. But at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> it had me transition to civilian world way quicker than I wanted to do. I, my goal was to plan to do 20. It would have been 20 years this year, actually. Um, January 04, I joined. Um, January 04, I'd have been 20, and I'd have been retired, or I'd probably still been in. Um, because the, the military is easy. Um, it's just some people in the military that can really test your patience or <clears throat> play, try to play with you. Um, but you got to stand on business. You got to stand 10 toes and, um, learn how to adapt and overcome because, um, it's never the, it's never the, the military. It's the people in the military that might hinder you. But, um, I had way more pros than cons being a Marine and I always will represent being a Marine any any branch um so uh being able to apply what i learned in in the, in the marines and transition out into the civilian world um it helped me uh communicate in a different term in a different in a different way as far as with civilians cuz the way we communicate in the military is not the same way we communicate in the real world, and um, I had to take out a lot of uh, <laughs> curse words when I'm dealing with certain people, uh, cause I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, your vocabulary definitely have some explicitives. Um, might be your first ten words, but uh, I learned how to, you know, transition and uh, you know, talk my talk. But do it the way I do it, and and respectfully, tactfully, and that's it. Uh, so that's it for the um overcoming adversity. What we got? What else we got? What else we got? Oh, music saved my life. Um, 
I think, what was it? Second grade, I was attending Faith Christian Academy back home in Detroit on Nevada in, what was that, Van Dyke. If y'all know, you know, you know. Now it's called Perfecting Church, so I'm not giving y'all some game for the people that's from back home. Um, my brother was a saxophone player, and he had um, his instructor, band, band instructor, was, was Mr. Mac. I ended up having Mr. Mac as my band instructor, but it was his brother. Best best person I ever met when it came to music. Um, when I joined the Marine Corps, I had backed out of being a, I didn't want to be a band geek in high school. And uh, I continued to play sports, but I, I ditched the music. And I played all elementary and middle school. When I joined the Marine Corps, I noticed something was missing um in my life and uh I started catching on because my best friend Kadeem, we was in boot camp, everything together, boot camp, MCT, uh MOS school. I think when we got the MOS school is where everything started started hitting as far as music. He loved the same music I like. I like the same music he liked. And he was putting me on artists too, cause you know, I'm from Detroit, and I listen to a lot of South music, down South music, but he was really putting me on, like, Camouflage, Rest in Peace, um, Boosie, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of that. Like, I didn't never, I never heard of it. So, when we got to the fleet in Cali, um, we just, you know, stayed with sharing music. And, you know, back then, LineWire, you had LineWire, you had... uh. Napster, you had all these different programs, you know, how to get music. And I was like, hands down, the king of mixtapes. I used to get all the mixtapes, um, the, the Duke the God mixtapes, the DJ Clues, the DJ Envies, the uh, DJ K Slay, rest in peace. Like, it was everybody's mixtape that was popping. I would go on these sites and get them. So, uh, we ended up deploying to Iraq in 05, our first time, to Ramadi and a uh, truck company. And, like, <clears throat> we were in the in the thick of it, man. Uh, and I was like, man, like, we get there, we land, um, and I felt the ground shaking. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I just heard this loud explosion. And um, I just seen this big mushroom cloud. And I was like, yo, what the hell? And I look over to the left, look over to the right, to the, the rest of the Marines, and somebody, I forgot who it was, I think it was my staff sergeant or somebody, he was like, welcome to Iraq. And I was just like, oh, we we, we in this shit. So um, after that, we had this thing called the PX. If you don't know, the PX is, is a, a store. It's like your convenience store. You can go and get whatever, snacks, uh, music, so it's like a mini, like a mini, like Best Buy or a mini, like Walmart type store, cause the the PX um for the military, you know, is is they got it different. Everybody calls there is something. The NEX Navy, BX is I think the Air Force and the Army. You know what I mean? So ours was the PX. We would go there, and I was a fan, and I'm still a fan of Double XL magazine, even though they've been falling off. But Double XL Magazine is what kept me in tune with music and kept me, you know, current with the culture and the hip hop culture and all of that. So me and Kadeem would, you know, check out the 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 uh the Double XL magazines or whatever. And uh, we we found out that it was like some some artists was coming out. One was named Young Jeezy, the other one name was Gucci Man. And, you know, we just stayed in tune with them. And sure enough, a couple months later, they tapes came out and they was able to per we was able to purchase them in Iraq. So mind you, you know, this this back in the day. So uh we were we had bought some some DVD players, portable DVD players, because we drove trucks or whatever, so we needed music to, you know, ride out to. And um we jamming, and I'm like, man, like, oh, this Jeezy hard, Thug Motivation 101, Gucci Man, uh, Trap House, I'm just jamming, and and I feel like 
the music saved my life because I was in and out of combat almost every other day um, when I was there, the first deployment. And I promise you, every every time I went home to the, you know, went to the hut, got a, got a couple hours in to go to sleep, like I was listening to music, listen to music, listen to music. I'm on a plane, listen to music. We on the helicopters, listen to music. I'm listening to music everywhere we at. Um, so, of course, you know, I get out. I'm still listening to music. Um, I'm still doing music, producing. And I feel like, to me, uh, music saved my life because, like, when I had them low places, um, either from, you know, having nightmares, um, sweating in my sleep, um, spazzing, um, letting everything get to me, um, trying to fight everybody. Music always kept me going. Um, so, yeah, music saved my life for real because um, even with my daughters, when they before they was born, I literally used to put headphones and turn the music up on Benita's stomach so they can listen to the music. And they used to move around every time they heard it. So I, I think that's one of our... our uh, are, are like gems that we we share with each other. We love music, and they I call them my little A&Rs because they listen to music that I probably would never listen to. But they 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 got taste. Both of them got taste, and uh, they put me on a lot of new artists. So I definitely say music saved my life it, um, to this day. And it's always a song that hits home when I'm going through certain things. So, yeah, music, music definitely is my is my sanctuary outside of, you know, being in the crib, peace, you see the speakers and stuff. So, yeah, music, music saved my life. Um next, what we got? What we got? Embracing change in life and the music industry and your health journey. Let's talk about it. Um, I got a love and hate relationship with the gym simply because when I first, before I joined the Marine Corps, I like, I was just so naturally talented, like gifted and, and I, I was like a human garbage disposal. Like I eat everything, but I was so active sports. I'm either down the street at my boy John crib or down the street at other Antoine crib. We balling, we playing sports, we playing street football, we on the bikes, we doing something. Join the Marine Corps, running, 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 running. Sports, um, still active. I'm like working out every day, running, running every day. Um, man, hiking. Oh my God, hiking 20, 20 miles, fifteen miles, depending on the unit. You know what I mean? Hiking up mountains. All of that. So when I got out the Marine Corps, I was just like, man, I can't, I can't stop. So I, I was still going. And I think I had hit a wall probably in about 2019. Yeah, like 2019, 2020. And I was just like, I'm tired of working out. And then boom, COVID hits. So now I'm definitely not working out. Um and I was okay, you know what I'm saying? I was fine, you know what I mean? I'm a foodie. If you know me, you know I'm a foodie. But um I had to I had to I had to adjust because I started seeing myself like I always look at myself when I when I'm in a mirror cuz sometimes I talk to myself and I and I say positive things to myself. But then I'm like trying to say positive things, and I'm like, "Oh, you ain't even looking right. What's up with you?" You know what I mean? So I uh, uh jumped back in the gym, and of course, shout out Kadeem. Kadeem was like, "Bro, you gotta get back in the gym. You gotta do something. You know what I mean? Because you're sitting in the house, like you can't just be just chilling, man. Like you got you gotta. I know it's tough. He's like, but you gotta get back. And I think after like second or third time he said that, I got back in the gym, and I actually go to the same corporation one life that he go to because I seen his gym and I'm like, yo, that joint dope. Where your joint at? But you know he all the way down in Virginia. So 
Luckily, they had some up here. Um, started been hitting the gym, been hitting the gym crazy. Um, I took a break when I uh when I went to Virginia. I mean, when I went to Connecticut for the Little League World Series, and uh, I've been back in the gym. Um, definitely going tomorrow. But I don't. You don't necessarily have to go to the gym to get a workout in. I just want y'all to know if you just go take a walk, if you you know what I mean, walk up your stairs, um multiple times just get outside is the is the thing get outside walk around um run i got a bike got it fixed then the joint uh i don't know how it got flat again the tires got flat um shout out to uh what is it hafi cycling shout out to matt matt one of my uh one of my homies um he got his his company and we gotta fix my gotta fix my tires bro like Matt put on my new, he put on, he fit, oh, my seat was bad. That's what happened. My my seat went bad, and I didn't know it, but he was riding a bike after he fixed it. He did his, you know, his his PMCS preventive maintenance on it, his preventive maintenance checks, and um, he put new pedals on there because it had them them little uh, road bike pedals, and I ain't got none of them shoes. I can't stand them shoes. But, uh, yeah, he, uh... He fixed it, so now I gotta go back and get it fixed again because the seat is broke. And um so I can go ride with the girls. The girls, man, they be they be doing everything. I'm I'm trying to keep up with my daughter, so they they super active. So that was another thing too. I wanted to be able to be active for them, cause I know um as a coach, you have to show the kids. So I felt like if I'm not showing them, I, they not gonna never understand it. it. I can say it all day, but if I get out there and show them and run laps with them and all of that, they see that okay, like oh, coach, coach Antoine is what they call me. Coach Antoine, he know what he doing. He, I know what he mean when he say this. I know, I know what this mean when when he when he what he mean this. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's been a journey. I've been eating semi better. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm a foodie. I ain't eating super super healthy, but. I definitely incorporating more fruit, um, more greens. Um, I kind of stay away from the fried food. Um, but if I'm back at home, though, it's off limits. Or if I'm in a nice state, I'm definitely going to partake, i.e. California. Shout out to Mailman, Yvonne, uh, Ruri, and my bro, Paul. Um my my family that's out there. Um, I don't know where I normally try to get out there at least once once a year. Um, but yeah, if if I'm out there with them, I'm definitely gonna indulge into some good eating. Um, but yeah, uh wealth is health. After every time I pray, I always say, um, whatever my prayer is, um, you know, guide me, uh, help me see, help me understand, da 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 da. Uh, in Jesus' name, wealth and health, amen. So I always do that. So every time I pray, I always say wealth and health because, um, you know, wealth is something that I would love to have, not just money-wise, money monetarily, just wealth, you know what I mean? Have investments, have things that, you know what I mean, I can pass down to my kids and their kids and their kids' kids and um, health, you know what I mean? Because uh, I lost my cousin Quest couple years ago and to this day um they said it was a a heart attack or or, or what cardiovascular uh whatever but i ain't i ain't going for it um but i'm just going off what they saying so quiz only 40 i'll be 39 this year so of course and like i've been trying to schedule things get my ekg everything checked for me um but uh yeah, health is everything. Um, so take care of yourself. Uh, if y'all not, if y'all not like, take take a small step. A small step can become a big step. Just like how you always say, the small things turn into the big things, and that's when things go overboard or the avalanche build up. In order for an avalanche to build, you got to start with the small steps. So you got to start positively with the small steps to get yourself better health wise um, and mentally. Um, so yeah, my life journey, my health journey has been, it's been a roller coaster, but I do feel better. Um, um, and, and 
I'm hitting my my VA appointments a little bit more now, even though the VA sucks. Um, I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, VA in DC sucks. I ain't gonna say everybody everywhere else, cause Fort Belvoir ones actually take took care of me when I was there, but the VA in DC sucks. And and like I had a schedule an appointment for my knee. And I don't got an appointment till October, and this was like two two months ago. Like the ava- the first available appointment was October, so yeah, take that and run with it. But um, what's next? My future. Um, my future. Hopefully, I'm doing this. You know, potting. Uh, I love to pot. I love to. I love to. Uh, talk to people I love to understand what they life like um I think me being a recruiter also pays um heavy to why I like talking to people because I couldn't I, I'm I'm not a I tell people all the time I'm not a people person but I can communicate with anybody I'm a, I'm a social butterfly but I'm not a people person so I think that's why a lot of times people are like yo you look you don't look on you don't look approachable and I'm like, I don't, I don't be doing nothing, you know. I just be chilling. But, um, yeah, potting. This is the twentieth episode. I try to do things. If I do start the next uh season, it'll definitely be off a of ten. Everything's in tens. I like mine's in tens, tens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties. Um, everything in tens. So, potting. Um, hopefully. I ain't even gonna cap. I'm a gamer. If you see the PS5, I'm a gamer. If I can get my my streaming thing going too, that'll be another great residual income. And of course, you know the music. Um, my uh, machine, my dang on theory board. Um, music, music gonna always be with me. So it's like I, I. Whatever I feel like being creative, or if I'm being inspired by other producers, other artists, or music that I hear, um, I start. I, you know, I go back and create more. But um, lately, it ain't been a lot. It ain't. A, it ain't been a lot. Ever since Drake and uh Kendrick um stopped the feuding, like it ain't been a lot of music. But I will say that DJ Mustard album definitely fire, top to bottom. Um. Well, album. Oh, Boss Man D Lo, shout out, shout out to Boss Man D Lo. Um, me and Melman definitely. That's Melman be jamming to that. Um, I'm trying to think, it ain't really much. I, it's, I mean, it's few singles. The Big Shine new single, tough. Shout out to shout. Stop. Let's start. Shout out to the family, man. Shout out to my bro GT back home. Shout out to Vez. Uh, shout out to the whole team Eastside, uh, Doughboys Cash Out, um, all the artists in Detroit for real, cause like y'all really pushing the needle for two, um, all of them, man. Sada, uh, man, so many, uh, John Boy, um, man, G Mac, G Mac Drake's be 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 tough. Uh, Babyface, right? Yeah, everybody, man. Um, shout out to y'all, man, because y'all are really putting on for the city, and I can really rock out to it because this is what we've been listening to since the '90s, the early 2000s. Because I remember me and Vez, Vez, me and Vez went to Osborne. Um, and everybody know. Oh, shout out to Get Money Boys, uh, Dre, D Bailey, rest in peace to Ant. Rest in peace to D Glove. Rest in peace to Rest in peace to B Strict. Um, all the homies, man, from 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 our area, man. We we definitely was rocking with Vez since day one. And Vezel is crazy now. Like he he done blew up. And I remember the first the first Rags the Riches tape. So um, yeah, uh, music is definitely it's changing, but. I'm okay with it. Music is always like that. So, future, um, yeah, potting, music, uh, oh, traveling with my pod, actually going out and and getting to different 
um, cities, states, and interviewing bigger people, or even like my whole thing of relationships worth more than money is you don't have to be a known person, but I, I want to know your lifestyle. I want to know your story. Maybe your story can help inspire somebody else to get, go do something or do something that, that you're doing. Um, but yeah. Oh, I, I want to, I'm going to speak it now. I'm going to interview Wallow, Gillian Wallow, because they were the first ones, um, to inspire me to keep, to do it. Like, um, and of course, you know, Gilly, and you know, I've been rocking with Gilly for the longest with major figures and, and Wallow's story get coming out of prison and, and, and turning his life around and hustling and going to PodCon. That's what really got me going. And that's why I started this for real. Um PodCon last year was super dope. He ain't, like he spent all that money and we ain't had to pay nothing just to come get free game. Charlemagne was there, I believe the girl, the lady from Shea Room was there. He had a bunch of insight, people to teach you how to build your credit up, how to run your business. Um, so yeah, I'm going to interview Gilly and Lo soon. So that's gonna be that's future. That's future. Um that's future uh future goals. Um let me see. Who else we got? Who else we got? RWMTM, the man behind the brand. I mean, this is me. This is me. This is this is who I am. Big Virgo. Tweezy. Um. This is me. Oh. Shout out to the flock. Flock Nation. Big Ravens. Um, people always ask me, yo, Tweezy, how the hell are you a damn Ravens fan? You from Detroit. So all right, I'm gonna give I'm I'm gonna give y'all the story. So I ain't got to tell y'all no more. Y'all going to see this on, on the pod, on the YouTubes, and on the shorts, and on the reels, and all of that. And y'all going to understand. So, all right. Boom. Born and raised Detroit, right? East side, west side. My dad was little on the west side. I was back and forth, back and forth, right? So, Detroit. I was a diehard Detroit everything. I have all the teams on my arm, except the Pistons. And I'm a huge Pistons fan, but... um. When I got out the Marines, uh, and I was doing my my sleeve session, my boy, um, he made it. He made the little, I guess, the little layout, the little thing, the cutout for it. And all I had to do is take it to somebody and they put it on my arm and a little ink of drink. Come on, there. it was the old school piston, um, like the Grant Hill pistons with the horse. That joint, it was that one. I didn't get it. I'm gonna get it though. I didn't get it, but I was diehard everything Detroit because of Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders, to this day, is my favorite running back. And it's some dope running backs. But right now, right up under Barry Sanders right now is Derrick Henry because he's on the Ravens. Uh, but anywho, no, nah, uh, I was I was a diehard uh, Lions fan. I ain't going to lie. Me and Quez went to the... Uh, we went to the game. I wasn't a Lions fan, but I was still supporting, you know what I mean, Calvin Johnson because, you know what I mean, that was the last time we had, like, something big like that until now. They got they got a dope squad now. But Calvin Johnson broke that record. I think it was Herman Moore record. or Herman Moore or Johnny Morton. Don't get me wrong. Correct me. Or whatever. I figured out during the uh, – when I edit, I, f- I find it out. But Calvin Johnson broke the record. Um, me and Quez were there having a time turning up. But I left when Barry left. That man was fighting for his life every time they said hike. He never had a line, never had a stable coach. And they made it to the playoffs a few times. And I remember the last time they made it, I think they played, was it the Jets? Or somebody, no, it was, no, they didn't play the Jets. It was right before they made it to the playoffs. They was like nine and seven or something. And I remember a Jets player getting injured. Like I think he ended up having a career ending injury. And when when they didn't sign, they didn't they didn't give him a a new contract and they wouldn't trade him. Hell, they could have traded him to the Dolphins. I still would have been a Barry Sanders fan. Cause that's how I am now with sports. I'm a players fan. The team's cool. Like, I'm always, I'm still Detroit everything except the Lions. That's it. I'm Detroit everything. But when it comes to the players, I like players and what they stand for, and I like their journey. Um, Again, 
Detroit Red Wings, Steve Eiserman, uh, uh, Chris Osgood, um, uh, the Tiger, Cecil Fielder, uh, man, Tony Clark, uh, Prince Fielder, um, man, I'm I'm still a fan of Detroit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a fan. But, uh, yeah, even when Detroit Shock was there, I remember I used to go with my, my substitute teacher used to t- take us down and try to be like the little Shock little dancers or the people that be like passing out the towels and shirts. And I was even a Detroit Shock fan, and we had Swing Cash. And um, I remember, man, them was the days, but I'm just not a Lions fan. I root for y'all. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's that's one thing about me. I'm not going to hate. You got a good team, you got a good team. But I'm also a realist, you know what I mean, too. So, like, um, shout out to the, the Lions. Um, shout out to everybody over there. Hutch, um, uh, Jared Goff, um, St. Brown, um, Amara. Um, yeah, man. Y'all, y'all got a squad now. Y'all got a squad. Y'all got some young talent. But... I'm a Ravens fan. So when Barry left, keep it a thought while. When Barry left, I ain't have a team. But me and 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 my brother and my cousins, we always played Madden since psh, Madden been out. Then 2K came out. And I was trying to figure out my team. So my team was the Buccaneers. I would play with the Buccaneers for like two years. You know what I mean? But I was still a Ravens fan because of Ray Lewis, Jamal Lewis, they had pretty much picked up from Cleveland and drove over to Baltimore. And I remember all of that because I'm like a sports fanatic when it comes to stuff like that, like the history of sports and things of that nature. So uh, uh, I've been a Ravens fan since. Ray Lewis, uh, I remember – who was it? Ray Lewis, Jamal Lewis, Deion Kane. I think he had like number 37 or something, some wild number. Deion Kane, uh, Ed Reed, um, what's Buddy uh, that they did dirty? Oh, Ray Rice. I had the Ray Rice jersey. I had the Ray Rice jersey. I had the Ed Reed jersey back in like 2000, early, early 2000s. Yeah, around that time I had it because I, I had moved here in 09. I got stationed in Quantico. So, yeah, definitely been a, a big Flock fan. Um, Baltimore is right up the street now. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we winning it this year. Just want to let y'all know, speaking into existence, and we're going to beat the Cowboys. <laughs> we're going to beat the Cowboys, y'all. I just want y'all to know. Um, yeah. Might be down there too. With all my purple and black and and and, and might be purple, not not too much black cuz it's still hot in Dallas. But um yeah, big flock fan, big flock nation. Um what else? What else? What else we got? Hmm. Trying to think. It's a good it's a nice it's a nice forty forty yeah, what forty something minutes? Yeah, um Oh if y'all got anybody y'all think should be on the show, um, reach out to me. I'm on RWMTM Pod on IG, um RWMTM Pod on TikTok, uh RWMTM Pod on um uh oh YouTube YouTube and look the merch you can get your merch in the link in the bio um you can get your merch on um what is it what's the name of the site Streamlab yeah Streamlab shout out to Streamlabs shout out to Streamlabs shout out to uh my bro Big John with Rare Love um if y'all want to get some rare love clothing, make sure y'all use my my coupon code RWMTM Love. Um, definitely get I think 10, 10 or fifteen percent off uh, off the site. Uh, we definitely still got like a collab one coming up. Um, who else? Oh, Opus Clip. Shout out to Opus Clip. 
Oh yeah, that's what, that's what it is. I need sponsors. I need more sponsors. I would like to have more sponsors. Um, if you rocking with me and you 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 uh like what I do, you like um how I interview and things of that nature, um, please reach out to me if I haven't reached out to you first. Hey, two way street, two way street. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I covered everything. Yeah, I covered everything. I covered everything. But like always, man, um, I appreciate each and every one of you um, for really just tuning in, listening. Uh, some people say that my voice is soothing. Some people say they love the way I, I communicate and talk. Um, I ain't perfect. You know what I mean? Got to put a little swang in there, a little twang in there. Everybody's always think, always think that I'm from the South, but I am. My whole family then migrated from, from Meridian, Mississippi, and on my mom's side, uh, Pensacola, Florida. So everybody then moved from the South up to Detroit. So, um, yeah, uh, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in and staying tuned in. But if you haven't told anybody, Go tell somebody to go follow RWMTM Pod. And like that, I'm Tweezy. I'm gone.